What's up guys, today's video is on the top 5 best audio interfaces in 2023. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the needs of different types of buyers. So whether it's price, performance, or its particular use, we've got you covered. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices. Like the video, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Number 5 Focusrite Scarlet Solo The Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd is a good buy for those looking to get started with recording. Because of its low price, portability, and features, this audio interface is a nice choice for folks on a tight budget or those looking to start out in the world of producing, mixing, and audio work in general. The Scarlet Solo is also a good option for songwriters looking to work on or demo their ideas while keeping the focus on the writing and not getting too caught up on the audio processing. The Scarlet Solo 3rd generation has a slick appearance and an intuitive design. With few knobs and controls, it is easy to understand how to use it before even plugging it in. This bus-powered audio interface features low latency, a sample rate of up to 192 kHz, and an optimized preamp gain structure. In other words, all you need to get started with recording and with excellent quality for such a low price. One glance at the Scarlet Solo and it becomes apparent why this interface is a good choice for songwriters. With one XLR input and one Hi-Z instrument input that can handle hot pickups, this is a great plug-and-play tool to quickly record ideas so you can further develop them. Focusrite also included the air circuit via a switch on the Scarlet Solo. This circuit models the company's famous ISA console transformer to give you a brighter and more open sound. It is conveniently located right next to the 48V phantom power button and right below the gain knob for input 1. To get right down to business, we set up a condenser mic, connected it to input 1, activated the 48V phantom power button, plugged in a Les Paul guitar on the instrument input, and fired up Logic X to start creating recording some ideas. The entire setup process happened fast and had us ready to lay down riffs and lyrics in a heartbeat. In other words, you won't be bogged down by complicated setups or configurations. Just plug in and start creating, after recording some chords with vocal mumbling to a potential melody, we wanted to see how far we could take the gain in the inputs. We dialed both of them all the way up, but got the immediate warning that it was too hot because the halo indicators on each gain knob turned red. We then backed down a bit, making the halo indicator turn amber. Finally, it turned green, indicating that we had reached the ideal level at which to have the game. After recording a few ideas, we were happy with the results. The sound was transparent and with no apparent noise, thanks to the Focusrite low distortion preamps. If you are looking for a two-input audio interface that is truly affordable, the Behringer Euphoria 2 Mauritanian Ugias is a good choice. For less than $50 you can get started with audio production with a small interface that comes with Phantom Power, Xenix preamps, and is compatible with Mac and PC. Number 4 Audient ID4 MKII The ID4 is a 2 inches 2 out 24 bit slash 96 kHz compact desktop design with one rear mounted mic slash line input and one front mounted instrument input. The Mic Pre is Audient's long established 8024 class A circuit and the instrument input is a JFET design. On the back is the 48V Phantom switch alongside a pair of 1 4 inch balanced monitor outputs. On the front edge is the instrument input and both 1 4 inch and 1 8 headphone outputs. Both headphone sockets receive the same signal and can be used simultaneously, which is very handy. On the top panel, in addition to two preamp gain controls, you get hardware monitoring via a simple balance control, input slash DAW, and output level is set via the large push button volume encoder the push action dims both headphones and main outputs and you can also mute just the speaker outputs using the speaker button. Meanwhile using the speaker button and ID button together allows you to adjust the left slash right balance of the zero latency monitoring. Alone, said ID button activates the encoder mode so you can use the main knob to adjust DAW plugin parameters. Finally, the top panel includes a 5-step output meter that temporarily doubles as a level indicator when you adjust one of the controls, the ID4 MK2 is exclusively USB bus powered, however unlike for its predecessor, connectivity is now via the latest USB-C style port. The ID4 also takes advantage of the higher power supplied via the USB 3.0 protocol to deliver an improved headphone output and provide true 48V phantom power to the mic pre. Number 3 Audion DVO4 the Audient Evo 4 is a plastic brick. While it isn't made purely for portable use, its footprint is smaller than that of any audio interface I've used in years. It's not actually clear which part is meant to face upwards at first glance. 
The top pane holds that big volume dial, so when you put the Audient Evo 4 on a desk, the headphone and guitar inputs face you. The Audient Evo 4 is a 2-in slash 2-out interface. In this case that means you get a pair of 6.35mm sockets for studio monitors on the back, and a pair of Combi XLR slash 6.35mm sockets for microphones or, for example, hooking up a guitar amplifier. Is the raw performance good enough? I think so. When you max out of the input level for the line inputs, there is a slight but noticeable noise bed. However, I can't really think of any normal situation in which you'd want to push the preamps that hard. At more regular volumes the Evo 4 sounds clean, and I was particularly impressed by the quality of the instrument input, it makes the raw feed from an electric guitar sound a lot like that of a clean channel on a guitar amp however, there is one problem, interference. When pushing the preamp fairly hard I could hear an odd ticking sound, which seemed to be exacerbated by connecting to a USB-C Thunderbolt hub rather than hooking up to my MacBook directly. And when listening with my phone next to the unit, switching from Wi-Fi to mobile internet introduced another form of ticking slash clicking noise. I'm not suggesting the Audient Evo 4 is unshielded, lots of folks may never notice this potential effect. The aluminium and steel casing of the Audient ID 4 should help reduce this further, though. It's the obvious pick for sound quality purists, but only has one microphone input, where the Evo has two. Number 2 Focusrite Scarlet 4i4 both the 4i4 and 8i6 support Focusrite's control application, and this means that a number of settings including pad, line slash high Z instrument selector, and the air option mentioned above can only be set via the software. The app also handles low latency monitoring, so there's no direct monitoring knob as per the 2i4, although it's worth noting that the 3rd gen 2i2 and solo interfaces continue to use this system. Whether you view this as extra flexibility or unnecessary complexity is personal preference, but I like the software option, particularly when you take into account that there's an accompanying nifty iOS app that effectively adds in remote control capabilities as well. A further positive is the monitor mix system which allows easy creation of low latency mixes for each output stream. Finally, both interfaces support Focusrite's loopback feature, whereby a further mix panel allows you to quickly root inputs, DAW outputs, or a custom blend of both back into the DAW.AS we've come to expect from the Scarlet series, the Sonics are neutral and the drivers reliable, and both units operate at up to 192 kHz. The air option tilts the frequency response towards high frequencies, and this can be great for taming undesirable proximity or adding high frequency lift. There's also a decent pack of bundled software including Ableton Live Lite 10, Pro Tools First Focusrite Creative Pack, Focusrite Red 2 and Red 3 Plugin Suite, Softube Time and Tone Bundle, XLN Audio Addictive Keys and Focusrite Plugin Collective. This is a solid refresh and both review models deliver a noticeable upgrade on predecessors. Number 1 Universal Audio Apollo Twin X Duo Heritage Edition for outputs, Twin X has a main monitor output pair alongside a second pair of outputs that can be used for driving a second set of monitors, or as a couple of auxiliary output channels from your DAW. There's also a headphone output on the front of the unit, and this has its own bus within the Twin X's mixer, and can carry a different mix to the main and or alternate outputs. The unit itself has a simple and intuitive set of buttons and meters on its top surface, along with a large data entry dial. This dial serves chiefly as a monitor volume controller but can also be used for setting input gain and alternate monitor and headphone volumes. There's also a line of buttons along the unit, which allow you to toggle phantom power and mute the monitors, for example, and generally provide more control over the preamps and outputs. To get full control over the Twin X's abilities, though, you need to turn to the UA console software. Console is the heart of the Apollo system, providing access to all mixer parameters and settings, as well as allowing you to load models into the unison preamps and UAD, two plugins into each channel's four insert points. You can choose whether effects loaded in this way are applied pre- or post-DAW, that is, whether the results of processing are passed into the DAW for recording or are only audible on the monitor signal. This is tremendously useful, as it allows you to create great-sounding ultra-low latency monitor and cue mixes without committing to a particular sound during track laying or, conversely, to render an effect chain as part of the sound to be recorded. Naturally, the number of simultaneous plugins that can be run depends on the number of DSP cores within your Apollo system, the complexity of the plugins you're using, and the sample rate you're working at. This last point is important particularly if you're working at 176.4 kHz or 192 kHz, because these high sample rates use considerably more of the available DSP power than rates of 96 kHz or below. Thank you watching this video do like and subscribe.